the age old debate. Should you buy Bitcoin? Should you buy Ethereum? Today we're talking about Bitcoin, we're talking about Ethereum, and we're talking about my plan moving forward to buy, to buy more Ethereum. I'm gonna break it down in this video, the thought process, the charts, and all that fun stuff right here, right now. So, well, stay tuned. <laughs> What's going on guys, Patrick here, and today we're talking about probably the number one question that I get almost every single day on Instagram, on YouTube, pretty much everywhere I go, even in real life, people wanna know, should you buy Bitcoin? Should you buy Ethereum? Well, it really comes down to understanding the differences between the two, and then also understanding the idea here that Bitcoin for me personally, this is the way I look at it, Bitcoin will always be the store of value, the indicator in the cryptocurrency market. Like if Bitcoin's crashing, there's a pretty good chance that everything else is crashing. If Bitcoin's going straight up, well, there's a pretty good chance that everything else is going straight up. So you've got to understand a couple different things here. Now, right now, the price of Bitcoin is $37,500. It recently had a high of $65,000. But if you compare that to Ethereum, the price of Ethereum right now is $2,700 with the high of $4,600. So a lot of people look at it like, okay, well, is it better for me to buy one Ethereum or is it better to, for me to buy $2,600 of? So a lot of people compare the two based on prices. But really, what you need to focus on here is the overall supply and really what we are talking about, right? So Bitcoin, like I said, for me, it's always gonna be that big indicator in the cryptocurrency market. I'm always gonna look at Bitcoin as the digital gold, the store of value that everyone's kind of focused on. There's obviously thousands of altcoins now that are coming and going and going up and going down. A lot of people will say, you know, oh, I believe that Ethereum will surpass Bitcoin in the future, that I believe that Bitcoin will be useless in the future. And the way that I look at it, again, is that Bitcoin will always be the first like mainstream cryptocurrency that everyone kind of focused on in the beginning. And then Ethereum came along and then you had other coins coming along, taking away that distracting people from actually buying solid projects like Ethereum or Bitcoin. Now let's talk about why I'm bullish here on Ethereum. I'm also bullish on Bitcoin, but why moving forward through this dip, if Ethereum and Bitcoin keep to continue lower, I will end up buying more Ethereum then I will end up buying Bitcoin. I already have Bitcoin, obviously, but moving forward, I will be looking to buy more Ethereum, more and more Ethereum over buying more and more Bitcoin. I will still buy Bitcoin and other coins as well, but my percentages in terms of my portfolio will be focused on really buying more Ethereum. So at the end of the day, proof of stake is a new concept to facilitate blockchain transactions, and it could reignite interest in the second largest cryptocurrency being Ethereum. Now, the idea here is that the Ethereum 2.0 will make transactions safer and increase the appeal of Ethereum as a digital currency. And obviously, if you look recently, the price of Ethereum going from $4,400 down there to almost uh, a little under $2,000. But if you go back here, let's go back to 2020, the price of Ethereum was $218 there in August. So from $218 to a high of $4,400. Ethereum did lead the way in percentage gains. They, Ethereum blew Bitcoin out of the water in terms of actual percentage gains. And at the same time, you shouldn't be confused on the price of Ethereum being cheaper than Bitcoin as like, okay, I wanna buy Ethereum because it's cheaper than Bitcoin. That's not really the best way to look at it, but let's just focus on why Ethereum here is a good long-term buy along with Bitcoin, like I said. But, you know, I'm gonna be buying more Ethereum. Also, if you guys haven't already hit that subscribe button, and if you're looking for the best place to buy cryptocurrency, don't be afraid to check out crypto.com. They've got a great app and a lot of really nice features, and they allow you to buy some of the smaller coins and tokens and things that are really going to the moon that Coinbase does not offer. So check them out, crypto.com. There's a link down below you can sign up. I think you get like $25 if you sign up, and then I get $25. So. It's a win-win for everybody, let's go. So recently the cryptocurrency market took a huge dip. We saw from Ethereum drop over 50%. A lot of people got really scared. Came from China putting pressure on the sector by ordering institutions to not offer crypto-related services to their customers. This caused a massive sell-off in the cryptocurrency space. But the way I look at it is, hey, if you were buying Ethereum at $4,000, 
Shouldn't you be really excited to buy Ethereum at the lows? You know, at the $2,000 area? If you could buy something 50% cheaper only a few months later, well, shouldn't you be pretty excited for that? A lot of people become scared when we have these big sell-offs, but for me, I look at it as like, this is a time to be buying. I do not want to be buying after Ethereum went from 2,000 to 4,000, but I would like to be buying at 2,000. I like to buy at 1,000. I like to buy at 500. You know what I mean? Like, I want to buy the dips. So the whole China news came out, the cryptocurrency market crashed. This has happened before. Back in 2017, the same exact news came out. China said, hey, we don't like cryptocurrency, blah, blah, blah. This has already happened. Again, comparing Bitcoin to Ethereum with percentages, Bitcoin year to date is up 28%, while Ethereum is up 272%. Okay? It's very, very interesting. Very, very nice to see those percentage gains. Again, like I said, that's why I'm focusing on Ethereum moving forward because I think the percentage gains will be much larger. So for Bitcoin, I see Bitcoin going, you know, $100,000, $200,000 in the future. Ethereum, I really don't have a top on it. Maybe $10,000, maybe more, maybe maybe $20,000 based on Ethereum 2.0, the idea of the burn as well. So that's one thing to focus on here. What's the upside for Ethereum from here? From $2,000 to $20,000, that's a 10 times return. Where if Bitcoin goes from $50,000 or $30,000 up to $200,000, that return is going to be much larger for Ethereum than Bitcoin at that point. Ethereum is obviously the second largest digital currency behind Bitcoin. So that's a big focus here as well. A lot of people are focused on the, you know, the top coins being Bitcoin, Ethereum. You got things like Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash. But really, Ethereum is leading the way with the whole DeFi projects, with all of the different tokens that are being launched on the Ethereum network. And also, according to Coinbase's latest business update, Ethereum's trading volume is increased substantially in the first quarter of 2021. Ethereum is not only the second largest digital currency in the market, but it is also the second most popular cryptocurrency for trading. Besides being the second largest digital currency, accounting for 20% of the total cryptocurrency market value and gaining institutional adoption, new proof of stake blockchain validation can address growing environmental and security concerns in evolving DeFi landscape. So the energy consumption of Bitcoin mining has been a big topic lately. We had Elon Musk talk about it. A lot of people have been talking about how it takes a lot of energy to mine Bitcoin. So that's where proof of stake really comes into play. And that's what's going on with Ethereum 2.0. Now, blockchain obviously requires some type of way to verify transactions. So really, the main consensus mechanism is proof of work, which is based on computer power. That's where Bitcoin mining comes from. It's basically validating and doing all these different transactions and then doing all these different algorithmic equations and the computers are working really, really hard and they're using all the power and you can that's where all that power consumption goes into these computers burning electricity to validate these transactions. Now, looking at proof of stake as an alternative, the idea here is not very energy intensive. So with Ethereum, you have validators over miners, and this would be a certain way to validate transactions on the Ethereum network. And these validators have to have a certain amount of tokens in order to verify blockchain transactions. To qualify as a validator on the Ethereum network, a validator must deposit 32 Ethereum a process which is called staking. This investment is meant to incentivize good behavior on part of the validator. Proof of stake, therefore, might be a better and safer way than proof of work to ensure integrity of the blockchain while using less energy. So the big topic right now is Ethereum 2 upgrade. So the Ethereum 2.0 upgrade is a hot topic right now. This is big deal for Ethereum. This is really the driver of Ethereum moving forward. Now, the idea, is it will merge the Ethereum 1.0 with Ethereum 2 blockchain, which will be based on proof of stake. Although it is not clear exactly when this migration will happen, perhaps in 2022, it can't be said with certainty. We'll see what happens, and that's kind of also something that's hanging over the Ethereum network and the price of Ethereum. Like, is this actually going to happen? Is it not going to happen? Is it all just hype, blah, blah, blah. But once the migration is completed, the Ethereum network will likely be more secure, less attractive for malicious actors, run faster, and 
It's more energy efficient. All of this will help mainstream adoption and increase the appeal of Ethereum as an investable digital asset. Now, obviously, there's risk involved with investing in any cryptocurrency ever. It doesn't matter if you're buying Bitcoin, Ethereum, whatever you're buying, there's risk based on that. But for me personally, I see it as a lot less risk buying the dips than buying the tops, right? I want to be buying the dips. I don't want to be buying the tops. And well, I think right now we're in a pretty good spot for a dip. Now, moving forward, people might say, well, this is going to go lower. And I'm totally fine with that moving forward. For the next year, two years, if we go into a bear market, I am ready to keep buying and buying and buying through a bear market as the world kind of moves and changes. I'm willing to buy these dips because I believe at some point, Ethereum will maybe dip down here to the $1,000, $2,000 area. And then after that, it's off to the races. So if we buy an average of $2,000, $1,000, and then a year from now, the price of Ethereum is back to the $5,000 area, well, then my average is gonna be beautiful and I'm gonna be living up the dream. The thing is, okay, let's say Ethereum just goes lower and lower and lower forever. Well, then I guess, you know, I ended up losing money. But in general, investing is obviously risky no matter how you do it. But for me, long-term investing at this point, it's much better to be buying these dips than to be buying the tops. And that's exactly what I will be doing moving forward. So we understand a couple of different things with Ethereum right now. Ethereum obviously is a decentralized internet of things. You got all these different tokens being built on it. You've got all these different networks being built on top of the Ethereum network, if that makes sense. Just think about Ethereum 2.0, Ethereum in general, as the internet. Think about Bitcoin as the digital gold. So moving forward, I will be buying more Ethereum than anything else or I'll be buying more DeFi type projects on the Ethereum network over buying Bitcoin, but I will continue to buy Bitcoin if there are opportunities to buy at a good price. So that's my take on Ethereum. Let me know down in the comments below, do you believe that Ethereum will surpass Bitcoin in the future in terms of market cap? Do you see Bitcoin going down and Ethereum just continuing to go higher? Will Ethereum replace Bitcoin? There are so many questions, there are so little time. Let me know down in the comments below, what do you guys think about this idea? Should I continue to buy Ethereum? I'll talk to you guys later on. <laughs>